uh, welcome. My name's Ann Bell, and I'm the president of uh, Swim Ontario. I'm proud to be such. Uh, tonight, uh, the presentations are going to be uh, first by myself, and then Dean Bowles and Darren Muma are going to uh, share uh, some of the content. The um, event will be recorded, and uh, that uh, the recording and the slide deck will be available for you afterwards. There's a lot in the slide deck that we're going to be showing you, and we're certainly not going to cover all of that uh, information in our presentation. Um, I just want to let you know that, um, oh yes, and we also have helping us, Stu and Christy and Karen are going to be helping with um, the chat box tonight. And what we would like you to do, what we hope you will do is uh, as we go along, if you have questions, please uh, put them in the chat box. It's down at the bottom. And um, we'll be tracking those questions and we're going to take uh, pauses in the presentations in between topics and uh, answer, uh, attend to your questions at that time. I will ask you to uh, please stay on mute. Uh, only because uh, background noises in your homes and uh, by your families uh, can be disruptive uh, to the call. We chose this week for this meeting because it is a National Volunteer Week recognition of, for recognition of volunteers. And many of the people, probably most of the people on this call are volunteers. And it is your efforts that make swimming in, in Ontario as great as it is. So. Uh, we do want to say thank you, and um, we appreciate all the work you do, and uh, you're sure not done. There's lots to be done ahead, so uh, thank you for being here and uh, being part of uh, all of our efforts. Just uh, at the beginning here, what we like to do as often as we can is recognize our partners, so we uh, have inserted this slide, and uh, uh, appreciate all that they do in contributing to our sport and our success. I also, uh, I mentioned that it is volunteer, uh, National Volunteer Week, and I do uh, want to also recognize some of the people, because this is about Swim Ontario's uh, activities right now, the people that work directly uh, with Swim Ontario, um, alongside uh, the folks in your club who are volunteers. Uh, I saw many of the faces of the board of directors on the call tonight. And we also have three board committees and have uh, uh, other uh, partners who join with us in the work of each of those specific committees. So, so thank to, thanks to all of you and recognizing you there. This is also, Dean has operations committees that have been established to provide expertise and support around uh, specific aspects of the work of Swim Ontario. And we have here uh, a list of those individuals who have volunteered for that work as well. And you'll have a chance when you see the slide deck to look at that, uh, to, to track who's been involved in those committees. Yes, a lot can happen in a year. And um, what I'm going to be doing uh, first off is just giving a very brief summary of what swimming, Swim Ontario has been involved in in the last uh, year. This uh, meeting and presentation isn't really about what's come before, it's about what's going ahead. Uh, but we wanted to do a summary um, about what we've been involved in, never mind the many things that have happened to you in the past years. Has a list and um, just uh, without going through every detail, the year has certainly gone quickly. I, for me it has, and I think for Swim Ontario, uh, we did have our first virtual AGM this year. And I think that was uh, uh, successful in involving a lot more people than we've been able to uh, reach out to at other times. We had a, uh, I'm going to talk about the stakeholders survey next. Uh, we had many return to swimming plans or versions of return to swimming plans and there's more to come your way. Hopefully the last one will be very soon. And um, both the return to swimming plan and the return to racing plans have really formed a framework um, that, uh, that will be important uh, in the months to come as we come out of COVID-19, whenever that is. We have been delivering webinars uh, 
on club governance, insurance, mental health, uh, provincial programming, and uh, uh, the issues of officials, officials as we uh, were looking at returning to swimming and racing. Um, I will mention that I think that Dean has pulled together some uh, great um, experts and provided a lot that has been available to coaches and swimmers around mental health and dealing with the issues and challenges of COVID-19. And uh, thanks very much to him for doing that. Uh, in funding, um, we have continued with our athlete performance funding. Uh, we refunded $100,000 uh, plus on club affiliation fees and uh, provided support for clubs with athletes athletes that are on the um, high performance exemption list. There's been education and training ongoing on coaching education and officials. And uh, we've tried to do some acknowledgement this year for the people who have reached milestones. And that includes uh, graduate program, uh, virtual awards, and uh, the masters and virtual tracking. All right, so uh, in terms of the uh, stakeholder survey, just to put it in perspective, in 2018, we had a, uh, we, um, uh, Dan Thompson formed the Move Us Forward Committee and we did a large survey and engagement of, of all stakeholders um, and laid out the plan for the 2020 to 2028 uh, strategic plan. And then we were, Swim Ontario was starting to make the changes in 2019, um, uh, making the improvements that were recommended that we got from the input from stakeholders, and then the uh, coronavirus hit. So we decided there'd always been a plan to go out in 2020 for uh, feedback to see how we were doing, gauging whether the improvements uh, um, were hitting their mark and uh, realized that we also needed to find out if we were doing what we needed to do related to the COVID um, uh, impact. So this survey ended up being um, about those two topics. One, how are we doing in the support to members uh, for swimming and how are we doing in terms of the COVID-19 response? Um, survey was done by... Um, the, a group from the International Institute for Sport, Business and Leadership from the University of Guelph, that's what the IISBL down there is, um, uh, references, and Swim Ontario collaboratively. Um, it was an, an anonymous survey, and um, we tried to reach out to uh, five stakeholder groups, so parents, athletes, officials, coaches, and club uh, board and staff members. The, um, and that's everything. Oh yes. And the full report, I just wanted to mention that the full report of this will be available to everybody, can be shared. Um, Dean will take care of that after. It's, this is just a brief summary of uh, what you told us. All right, so the, we felt that there was a very good response um, to the survey. The majority of the respondents, no surprise, were from Central Region because that is the largest. And then followed by Eastern and Western Regions and uh, Huronia and the North certainly had fewer respondents. Most of the respondents did come from large clubs. Um, and uh, you, we had hoped to hear uh, more broadly from everybody because we certainly have lots of small clubs um, in our membership. But um, the, an analysis was done about the significance of the, um, of the opinions and uh, the scientists tell us that there were no significant differences found uh, for the regions or the club sizes. Certainly there were some differences in opinion when it came to who, who those folks were, whether they were parents or athletes or coaches, etc. So the, um, we also found and this, this is no surprise that uh, all five stakeholder groups really had a greater focus on COVID-19 and Swim Ontario's return to swimming um, than on the work that we'd done before that and how we had been doing um, as we were approaching uh, a full season without COVID-19. 
that's no surprise. And um, it's not it's not a bad thing. We needed to know. We needed to have the responses that uh, we could get around COVID-19 and, and learn more about how we could help. So, uh, so that was okay. So this gets just very briefly into the responses. Um, safety and fairness was definitely a, a major theme throughout. Uh, how do we keep everybody safe? How do we uh, act fairly in terms of who has access to uh, to the water. And by the way, for those that have forgotten, this survey was done just after the AGM. So it was uh, October, November uh, period when it was done. So we were just entering into um, uh, what we hoped would be the, the uh, restart of swimming, which didn't last too long, but um, it, uh, it had that, um, it had all those influences at that time. Um, we certainly learned that performance is important to coaches. Uh, if you see over on the right side, uh, what uh, some of the uh, comments that came there. And uh, to board and staff, they were definitely looking for the kind of support that we could give that uh, would help them as clubs um, to stay viable and to deal with the questions and the pressures of their, their members. Um, this shows a little bit, um, just kind of breaks down in the areas of what were we, uh, did um, those different groups think we were doing well or did we need improvement? And um, we won every contest by a little wee margin. So I wouldn't, um, I think it's good, it's important to get the feedback, to know what we should be doing. Um, if I look, for example, at board and staff, um, 49 of the respondents said that we, uh, we were providing organizational structure and to Ontario swimming, but um, another 47 of them said we need to engage with stakeholders more, we need to support the grassroots. And um, that's what you need and that's what we need to respond to. I won't go into all of the um, comments there. It'll be available for you when you get to... Um, take a look at the full survey and, and when you look at the slide deck and have a chance to read some of those comments. And these were the takeaways. And uh, right now, um, Dean and his staff and the board are um, very conscious of the things that we need to be doing uh, more of right at this time. And uh, these come together from the input of the stakeholders and uh, from looking at what our strengths and what they say that we are, are doing well. So communication is a big uh, theme here. It's about uh, increasing our outreach and engagement, um, sharing some success stories, giving people examples of what we do do well, uh, leveraging some of our targeted, uh, some targeted media tools that uh, are meaningful to uh, our athletes and our coaches uh, to continue with our education and certification standards. We got a good review on that. Leverage the quality of meets and events. Um, certainly uh, the um, feedback was that that's one of the things that uh, we do do very well when we get a chance to do it. And finally, to just improve all of our external communications. And uh, Dean will be talking a little bit about that. So let's take a pause now. And Karen, uh, can you tell me, are there any questions that uh, have been asked? Nope, not yet. It's, it's early on. Anybody have a question that they want to ask at this point? Thanks, Ann. Um, next couple slides we're gonna have. Uh, oh, there, there is a question. Mm -hmm. Where do we find the webinars on mental health? It's all on that. You go to our website, and uh, look for the COVID, the blue COVID button, and you find you navigate yourself through there. And so it's, uh, that's where m many of those things are. And later on, some of the staff can tell us a little bit clearer. Anyways, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for making the time uh, to be, be with us. We felt uh, so much is going on and so much not going on in a sense. Uh, definitely lots of... Uh, twists and turns. Uh, this slide basically represents some of the challenges. And um, one of the things when we say rebuilding programs, 
it's a little bit of a checklist. Maybe it's this is where you're, you're coming to. It's it's April, end of April. In most cases, clubs are you know either having some annual general meetings or establishing what does next year look like or how does how are you going to get through this year in, in an interesting piece. But so under rebuilding programs, I sort of phrase it under questions. You know, how do we re reconnect with those who have not been able to swim? Uh, we do know that uh, many clubs have tried to give water time to everybody that's in the program and um, and some have focused more on their on their higher their higher performers and so there's about there's a bit of a check check and balance that you need to do at some point in time when when the water starts to become again uh, uh, more prevalent uh, you know looking at do you have enough pool time enough space we know that we've been restricted in so many just with uh, uh, numbers restrictions and, and things like that. Uh, do you have enough coaches? How, how are your coaches doing? Um, how are they managing? Uh, I have to say that uh, uh, from my, my perspective, the coaches have done a tremendous job for your clubs and swimmers uh, over the period of time. Uh, a, a great deal of demands have been on them just on a uh, admin, somewhat of administrative uh, paperwork with return to swimming plans working with probably more people than they're used to working with in an interesting uh, time period. And then when, it, when do uh, competition return? And that's our biggest, uh, one of our biggest questions right now. Our key is see when we can uh, get out of this messy middle right now and get back to uh, some semblance with faces in the water. And then you're also looking at recognizing the financial impact. And uh, hopefully you've been able to um, take full advantage of uh, uh, of, of the, of the uh, government uh, uh, relief programs, federal government relief programs have been available, whether it's rent relief, whether it's uh, so if you had to uh, furlough people or whatever, or uh, if you had to go on some wage subsidies. Um, hopefully you're looking at that. I know it can't last forever. I know that you're trying to work on your uh, facility relationships. And some of you have, maybe that's a silver lining that's taken place during this. You, you've had to work uh, uh, much more intently with your facilities. Uh, if there has been a bit of a pause on that, you need to think about coming back to them because they will get back in business at some point in time. Um, obviously, the big question, re return to uh, competition. We've had lots of starts and stops on that. And, uh, you know, I have to recognize that the, the hardest hit uh, uh, areas, jurisdictions, uh, regions in uh in, in the country has been the Peel and, and Toronto region um, right from the end of uh, November uh, continually through. You haven't been able to do it. Other regions have been able to do some starts and stops. And then, you know, have fundraising, but you're trying to figure out how do you come out of this and how do you move forward? And then it, the last piece of impact on the person, and this is thinking about all these things, the mental and emotional uh, uh, processes, uh, demands, uh, People, it's all about people. This this uh, thing, trying to understand what they're going through, so and then work towards that they they can uh, understand where you're at. Um, from this, I'll just speak to it. Uh, we are hosting Education Week in late September. We've got many ideas around it, working on a, a virtual platform because we know that we, we we decided early into the process that we were not going to come in per, uh, be able to go in person. And so one of the things, this being mostly a, a administrative club leadership uh, audience, but I know a number of coaches there, and we have asked some, some uh, coaching groups what they would look like or what would they would like to see as some of the uh, pieces that would help. And so, you know, you can do it in the chat box or you can send an email, uh, bring it up at any point in time. But is there things that we can search out to bring as a, a very interesting thing to, to a club level? That you're in search of. Uh, we know that there's many, many platforms out there that you can follow and find information on, but we're going to try and create our, we'll call it our Ontario made process. Uh, we're excited about what we can try and do in that, that regard. Um, I think this schematic, you can definitely, uh, you can definitely uh, relate to it, that uh, as we go through whatever you call it, the next normal, new normal, that it will be a somewhat of a roller coaster ride, uh, uh, loop de doo loo, or whatever you want to call it. But as uh, Ann showed earlier, the previous slides, we had our board of directors and their committees. And I just have to say, if you're not familiar with what Ann has done in the last uh, couple of years, 
is that after the AGM, a new board board is uh, presented and there's people that ran for board positions were not successful. She did her very best to bring them in to the committee structure under the board committee structure. And I'll have to say that the board committee structure, there's really good people on there and they've been quite helpful. Uh, definitely a, a, working, a working process. And then you saw the number of oper uh, operation uh, committees that we have. And I've always referred to this as that it's the leadership team of Swim Ontario. It's just not staff and board, but it's all the committees that play the role in this. And then when you add up the names and everything, you can see that uh, there's a, a good 60 some odd people that are involved in, in uh, trying to uh, end to the needs of the organization and basically needs of uh, you as clubs. So uh, you'll see the names there, you'll recognize them. Some of them that you deal with constantly and some of them are constantly bugging you for things. So um, uh, hopefully they're not strangers to you and they've been uh, working from home, working uh, tirelessly. I know when we first started this a year ago, we met every day, vir uh, first with a conference call and then the virtual. And we then went to two days a week and now we scale back to one meeting, one meeting as a full staff. Uh, but the day does not go by that uh, each of us have talked to each other uh, and with others. So it's a constant, it's a constant process. So this next one, I'll draw your attention to the, the little, little drawing there, if you can see it. And really, I think this is what you can relate to because we've had lots of starts, lots of stops, hurry it up, right? And then wait, and then, you know, we have to make decisions and then it's maybe, and then, you know, it's, it's just changing direction. This has been what it is, and, and uh, uh, it's amazing how you've been able to stay the course and stay uh, true to what you what you believe in with your athletes and with your club development and, and your people. So uh, really, again, another shout out to you that uh, you've done a tremendous job in that. I know it, we're wearing thin. We're getting fatigued the whole bit. What we're looking at here, and when we did started this process of developing some of these slides, we thought April might be, you know, we're in April, but we thought April was going to have a bit more shining uh, light to it. But now we have to think maybe it's May to August. And you have some to-do lists there. And basically it's where you're at. Where are you in your programming, your budget, any succession planning, uh, anything to work towards in the 21-22 season. You know, you have to look at uh, updating and amending your return to swimming programs. Uh, what does that might look like? Hopefully you get some outdoor pool space. Hopefully you'll get some indoor pool space. Hopefully you'll be able to get some uh, swimmers that haven't been able to swim for a very long time back in the water, getting uh, their faces in the water. In there, there a little mention around affiliation info information, it will be available uh, mid to late June. Um, and I have more to say on that in a little bit, but uh, we should be able to get there. Looking at programming, obviously the summer programming, we're making some, you know, Basically, considerations for you to keep it fun and friendly. Uh, emphasis on athlete connection. Uh, it's not going to be all about performance. Yes, we have a layer of athletes right now and coaches who are focused in on a performance uh, a moment. And those moments uh, will come. Uh, I, I do believe that. It's just been a really uh, hard, hard point. But just think about your programs, your younger groups, getting them to return to swimming. I think it's really important to try and do that and you might have to give up a little bit on the older ones so if you can continue to do that be in touch with your facility staff because they will be they will be uh uh you know busy themselves when things get to get going and they'll be wanting to ramp up their programming so you're you're going to have not only the challenge of getting into the pool but competing for pool space little things like that we turn to open water training or open water opportunities, we will uh, have a webinar. Uh, we have a master's webinar on Sunday, and then we have a, a club youth uh, age group club uh, webinar, two of them on Thursday, the 29th. Um, and we will be looking at, uh, obviously, hopefully you'll be able to get back to your outdoor uh, uh, training, uh, swimming, if some, some of you uh, reap the benefits last year of some of the facilities and municipalities opening up pool time, whether that will start in a, a, a good period of time, not sure, but hopefully they'll stay, stay long on it. We do have two open water events scheduled in July and August, uh, one uh, July 10th, 11th, and one is August 22nd. And each week, we're, uh, Christy is leading that charge and, and uh, 
getting things organized. We do feel that that's an opportunity that can take place uh, in one way or not. It won't be for everybody, obviously, but it hopefully it'll have lend itself well. So I draw your attention to some important dates. You're here tonight. That's fantastic. Uh, on Saturday, we have a youth ID camp number two. We've been uh, trying to do these virtually. Stu has been a doing a tremendous job with uh, many of the staff and our sport experts to uh, end our uh, Canada Games uh, coach, Kathy Party, to try and uh, get something going in that regard, to find a connection. A number of coaches are involved. So that's been terrific. We have some, open, as I said, open water webinars and uh, in the events. Uh, May 4th, we're going to be doing a grant application uh, seminar, writing se seminar. Uh, there's many application or opportunities. We've been applying for some. And so we, Ann and uh, Christy are going to help out with that. So we do know there's quite a few things coming. Uh, uh, what extent they are, we don't know. But if we can give a hand so that it doesn't seem as uh, onerous or so challenging, uh, we want to be able to help you with that. So that webinar is on the 4th. We will have an insurance webinar. And Darren will speak to insurance uh, in just a minute or so. And then obviously the club affiliation um, it will be returning uh, in, in June, start up in July, for September. We do, will be better improved. Uh, there will be a bit more user friendly. Um, and hopefully that will make uh, September registration a bit more seamless, a bit more friendly. Perhaps not yet for the officials, they're still working on that. And um, so before I pass over to Darren, any questions at this point in time? Any, I see some in the chat box, anything of uh, that's. So I will answer one. It's uh, why are we covering info and response from a survey in October now? Fair, that's a fair question. Uh, it is a while since we received it. It did take us a while to get the results uh, from a university uh, program where uh, the students are learning how to do the work uh, as they go through it. But I think the, the bottom line is we were always busy about the next step. Uh, and uh, because we were having this opportunity, we wanted to start out by giving you what, we, what, what was the basis of uh, the work that we're doing. Why are we doing what we're doing? And it what was based on the feedback that you gave us. So that was one of the questions. The, uh, I, I'll just roll here, Karen. The other one, can you bring officials training to a virtual program for small clubs? I think if that question's asked, I am sure that the chairs of the of the souk will work that out. Uh, Nicole and Trevor, I'm sure that uh, I'm, I know that they've been busy and giving clinics, obviously uh, uh, at certain levels and things like that, from what I understand. So I am sure that that can be managed. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Carry on. I think it'll be Darren. So I wanted to just explain a little bit about how our insurance works. Swim Ontario is part of a consortium of swim provinces. There are four of us and Swimming Canada that are grouped together under one insurance policy. It's basically economies of scale. It's been that way since 2011. So when our insurer makes changes, there are always several other provinces wish lists and whatnot to, uh, to uh, take into consideration as well as Swimming Canada's needs, wants and desires for insurance before uh, any changes to the policy are being made. Um, we are going to be working with Sport Law and Strategy in, uh, no, in May, sometime between the 10th and the 15th. We just have to nail down the date with Steve Indig to go through uh, the nuances of, of insurance coverage and, and what's coming. So save the date for that. We will get that out to you as soon as we have the date nailed down. We're expecting to have that done by early next week when Steve returns from vacation. One of the things about our insurance policy is it renews in December, December 1st every year. So we have the advantage right now of looking at what other sports and what other swim provinces are getting into as they uh, renew their insurance policy. And I think there's two statements uh, that are becoming more and more clear as we go through this and we see the insurance companies reacting to COVID, safe sport, and, and, other, uh, and other issues. Insurance coverage is becoming more and more restrictive. 
um, more things are being excluded from insurance policies and requirements for coverage are being more onerous. The newest one that's coming that we've seen from other sports is the, the travel coverage. So out of province, medical, uh, AD&D, that kind of coverage, uh, AD&D is accidental death and dismemberment. Um, that kind of coverage is becoming increasingly more expensive and harder to get. Uh, currently, organizations that are trying to do it, trying to travel, I guess those are high performance athletes, uh, we're finding that that coverage is becoming very bespoke. In other words, you have to uh, send in your, your plan for your camp or whatever, and then the insurance company comes back and gives you a quote. So it's, it, it, our, our viewpoint is that it's not going to be as simple as it was in 2019, where you give Karen a call and say, hey, we got 30 kids going to wherever, can we get medical coverage? So um, things currently right now are all over the map. We're trying to work through the, the noise for you guys and, and uh, more of that will be discussed in our, uh, during our webinar. But as, as one example, the two, and I said, the two things that we're seeing right now is more restrictive and requirements becoming more demanding. So in terms of insurance, uh, how are we helping the clubs? Well, in order to comply with Bill 218, that's the sort of anti-lawsuit COVID bill that the government passed, is our policies and procedures have to be very extensive and in place to mitigate the risk to clubs and volunteers. And our goal is twofold. One, it's to help mitigate the risk to the volunteer board members of every single member club and help mitigate the risk to the volunteer board members of Swim Ontario, the corporation. One of the ways we did this, and we were one of the few PSOs allowed to purchase COVID defense coverage. So we have a $250,000 policy and that's the maximum we could get that would pay for initial defense costs should somebody sue Swim Ontario or the or, or club organization uh, because they caught COVID. That coupled with Bill 218 should provide, uh, probably, it hasn't been tested in court, some risk mitigation for, for those types of instances. Again, that will be discussed in greater detail um, in, in the May um, insurance webinar. Uh, we advocate to Swimming Canada to push insurance and risk management review. Um, we would like to see the policy change, uh, but there is a very detailed process to work through with Swimming Canada to, uh, and, and the other provinces to try and make that happen. So just rest assured that we are working on your behalf to try and get the best possible coverage at, at the most reasonable uh, price for that coverage. Uh, it's, not, it's not like booking your homeowner's insurance or your car insurance or anything like that. It takes probably the better part of the year to go through this process. Uh, we're always constantly advocating on our behalf of our member clubs to add insurance endorsements to the existing policy. The virtual dryland training was one example. The uh, cross country skiing was yet another example. There are others that we continue to advocate on your behalf. Uh, some are easy, yep, we can do that. Others uh, take some time. Uh, quick question, has there been any lawsuits because of COVID? Not that we were, are aware of at this point. It's probably too early in the process for those types of things to happen. So none of Bill, as far as the best of my knowledge, and again, that can, will be covered uh, by Steve and, and the other lawyers uh, in May, but to the best of my knowledge, none of Bill 218 or return to sport plans in any sport have been tested in court. Uh, and, then, and then the last part is hosting and continually updating information sessions like the insurance webinar. And there will be a safe sport webinar uh, later on in and around the time of the, uh, of the conference. And at a very high level, that's, uh, that's insurance. So stay tuned for the May webinar when we will delve into this in greater detail. Uh, we have a couple of questions uh, for whoever wants to answer. Uh, one, is there consideration for grassroots marketing to get kids back in the water? Clubs 
who have no outdoor pools or open water activity? That is one of our mainstays that we want to see our grassroots, our young swimmers back in the water. And, and I, uh, to give you an answer, whether we have a planned marketing process, we know that we've discussed some things with Swimming Canada, what they can uh, deliver for us. But I think this is where we want to hear hear from what is of a high uh, of a high uh, required nature. And so then we can work towards that. We can work towards it. And there was one other comment from Louise, just that I presume the tighter tighter restrictions are because of COVID. Yeah, COVID has revealed quite a bit. Uh, yeah, COVID is one of the reasons. There were also other restrictions coming because of, of safe sport. Um, in, in other sports other than swimming, there have been a number of costly settlements having to do specifically with safe sport. Um, and make no mistake, what happened south of the border too, and you can think about all the mess that happened with USA Gymnastics, uh, Canadian insurance companies, because in general, they're subsidiaries of American insurance companies to pay very close attention to those types of settlements. So it, COVID for sure is, is a big part of it, but there are other parts that are leading to more restrictive insurance regulations as well. Science is deemed extremely safe, including no evidence of transition in chlorine water. Does this not help the risk assessment as it relates to insurance coverage? It absolutely does inside the water when people are in the pool. What the Life Saving Society is telling me, and I'm sitting on a, on a, on a small committee with Life Saving Society and others, and they have direct input into the uh, uh, provincial health unit inspectors or sorry, uh, municipal health unit inspectors, they're not as concerned. They've seen the research too, and they're not as concerned about faces in the water as they are with uh, what happens on deck, what happens in the change rooms, what happens in the parking lot, what happens in and out of the building. So uh, al although it helps for sure, uh, there's still a number of other concerns that, are, uh, that, that, that people are worried about to and from actually getting into the water and whatnot. How is Swim Ontario planning to address the skill gap, no lessons in the past year, in incoming younger swimmers? Allow more pre-comp, flexible with coaching at pre-comp level, specific intro or semi-competitive slash novice programming? Those are all, those are all good, good points that are being made there. And I think that's where uh, collaborating with the clubs with their, their ideas because you do know what you what you're capable what you believe you're capable of uh, and so maybe what we'll do is we'll have a uh, sort of an, another session who's of interest on trying to build out the grassroots and the development pieces we know that there's a big void we know that uh, that's one of the reasons why we have Darren and Stu working with the life saving to see what they're going to do they they we, we share some of the same gaps and voids and uh so i think the, the collaboration piece will be will be helpful for us we just don't have a clear picture of what that might be right now um okay this next thing is now moving forward hopefully september december will look uh much better for us and uh my at minimum i would say that it's still going to be slow and steady but i think the key thing will be without interruption without any pauses uh, we do have some challenges. It's, uh, you know, depends how far, you, how deep you go into what you're, what you're understanding about the, the uh, virus and, and everything. But, you know, we look at it where we know that the majority of our clientele are uh, kids that are under the age of 18. And we're not sure what the schedule is for them to be vaccinated, because that will be a, a challenging part when it comes to gatherings. And so, uh, that's why I say it will be slow and steady, hopefully without interruptions, hopefully with growth. Uh, I mentioned the club uh, around club affiliation. And as you go through the registration part in uh, September, hopefully that will be a much more user friendly situation. The registration fees stay as same, both Swimming Canada and Swim Ontario remain the same. Um, one of the things that I'll point out on this uh, slide is that we mentioned last year in the last fiscal that we were able to uh, assist uh, through partnership with the federal government and with the 
our own uh, funds to uh, assist uh, give back affiliation uh, fees and to assist the, the high performance exemption that came out to around $100,000. This time around, we're, we're uh, anticipating and working on a program that will be for clubs uh, with need that can demonstrate need. And we're looking at a fund between 100,000 and 150,000. We're just working with our finance committee and the numbers to see what that is. And that will be an application process. We'll, tr we'll get, that, get more information out about that, but that could have good impact, potential of reaching out between 10 and 25 clubs. Uh, and and that, that's what we, can, what we believe is in our means to do it and, and which is the right thing to do. And hopefully uh, it's an application form that uh, will be uh, uh, open and easy for you to manage. Um, I think the other pieces are just working at the return to swimming plans and hopefully those things will get a bit, uh, a bit better and expand, not in some ways not as restrictive, but the return to swimming plans and the return to racing frameworks. I, I know it's been a challenge. I know that you, even the question saying it's, it's safe to be in the water, yes, but there's all these other pieces of the, of the puzzle that uh, we have to uh, be aware of. And the reason that I think we have not had incident, we'll call it incident, and we cross our fingers every single day that that's the case, is because of these strong plans that we have in place. And whenever um, Darren uh, has uh, had to work with the public health unit, uh, in most cases, or in all cases, the ones that speak to them, uh, say that our, our program or our return plans are quite good. And that's, uh, that's recognition of you as clubs uh, uh, put into place. So we'll have to continue with that. We can't be loose with it. We live in Ontario, we live in Canada. I know it's difficult to look around the world and see what's going on uh, elsewhere, but it is where we live and it's what we have to uh, work with and abide with. But every step of the way that we can show success, I believe that will help uh, uh, expand and open doors for us. Uh, we do want you to consider all the possibilities around getting your grassroots programs going, uh, working with developing your coaches and everything else. But you know, as a question that came up, I think that's something that uh, we can consider maybe on a, a, another opportunity. Uh, the last thing I'll bring up here is uh, just some important dates. So right now we're looking at September 24th to October 2nd as our education week and virtual conference and and awards and things like that. And you'll think, wow, that's a long period of time. But obviously if uh, you've seen how other education platforms have taken place, it's over multiple days, some in the middle of the day, some in the evening, some on weekends. So we're working out that. We are gonna have an annual general meeting. It will be virtual. And this time we're gonna move to midweek, Tuesday evening. That's a new one for us. So, uh, even, you know, 95 plus years in the, in the business of, of uh, organized swimming. Uh, we're trying new things. How about that? Who, who, you know, that's uh, good. You'll see that we'll have a submission uh, deadline, and that will probably bumped up. That will probably be changed. More information we get every day from what our partners are telling us. We'll probably have to bump that up. We're going to be looking towards the Canada Games. That they are uh, going to be in 2022, and we have uh, plans and programming for that. And uh, you know, obviously, we would hope by the time December rolls around that we can see an OJI even in a modified version because we see, we've seen the, uh, uh, the benefits of that program. But we also do know uh, that the ISL might be in Toronto, might be at TPASC in the fall. Uh, obviously they're working on things too. So there's an element of exciting things that can come, whether we get to see it in real time or we have to see it through uh, uh, another manner. So. I leave it at that. Any questions that have come up? Anything of uh Yeah, Dean, there's a few questions here. Uh, one from Robin. Uh, is, is, is there a way to send out a thought exchange to gather these ideas first and then come together to talk ideas? That's referring back to the grassroots. Younger yeah. kids. Great. Will Swim Ontario reimburse clubs that registered their swimmers as competitive at the start of the year, but who have not been able to race this season? At this point in time, no. Uh, next question is from Linda. Any suggestions or support to fill the coach gap due to loss of coaches to other positions during COVID? 
It's a great question, a great challenge. Uh, I think we have to, you know, um, trying to get an inventory of really what is has has taken place, and uh, I'll call it what is the collateral damage of uh, of uh, COVID. Uh, that would be another. We we try and ask for feedback. I know uh, uh, Stu working with the coaches committee, and uh, we try and get a little bit of feedback with our sport management committee. So. Uh, we can only go with what we what we hear and what we know. We do ask, but uh, it's sometimes easier is if we just get that information sent to us. We have one more. How can member clubs help to help Swim Ontario? Working together can have more impact. Absolutely, uh, I can I can tell you a couple things that are on my mind, but that'll be another time. Uh, but I would say one of the things is that we do have a conference. One of the things would be, can we get some topics that might be of interest so that we can search those things out and provide them? That would be, that would be quite helpful. Uh, how will Canada Games selection happen without a date, event, results, slash times? Well, that's all in the process. I, I think uh, that's all in process. They just sent out, actually, they just sent out an update on Canada Games last night. So, um, but we have that in, in plan. Okay, from Matt, September to December 2021 timeframe, racing is not critical, but being able to train with full lanes and no restrictions is much more important. We should push as an organization for that as our sport is safe. Absolutely, and that's why we've... Uh, uh, formed a collaborative uh, working relationship with uh, Canadian Life Saving on that. Um, I'll leave it at that. That's all the questions for now. Okay, I'll turn it over to Darren. So one of the things that we decided to do during COVID um, as an organization is update our, our bylaws. Uh, the last major renovation to the bylaws was 2012. There have been minor renovations up to and including 2017. Uh, but reviewing them with the sport and law, we found a few areas that, that needed to be done sooner rather than later. So we decided to take on a whole, what we will call modernization of our bylaws. So next, uh, so why update the bylaws and why now? So significant changes have occurred both in the size of Sumo Ontario and some significant registration policy with Swimming Canada since 2012. Uh, legislative and sport governance best practices, COC came out with a code of best practices for the, for the federal not-for-profits. And some of that, uh, some of that information uh, seems very useful to Swimming Ontario. There's also, you may know, may have heard, may know that there is a, uh, the new uh, Ontario Not-for-Profit Act is sitting uh, in, sitting in Parliament, or sorry, in the legislature collecting dust, waiting for uh, royal assent to become law. I have no idea when that's happening. Obviously, that was supposed to happen a year ago, but everything's been delayed because of COVID. But we are taking the opportunity to update our bylaws based on uh, best advice from people who know what's in that piece of legislation. And, and we also need to ensure consistency with our bylaws for ever evolving safe sport practices and policies. We're anticipating some uh, either federal or provincial or both government mandates coming down uh, uh, with regard to safe sport in terms of things that need to be in place. So we're, we're anticipating uh, amending our bylaws accordingly so that, that those policies and procedures can be smoothly integrated when they happen. Um, the, the growth evolution of competitive swimming, basically Swim Ontario is between 2012 and 2019, Swim Ontario doubled in size and that needs to be reflected in our bylaws, inclu including the inclusion of, of master swimming. So when, when the Policy and Governance Committee struck the bylaw subcommittee, it gave us objectives and guiding principles in terms of rewriting the bylaws, uh, and, and those are there. So ensure transparency, accountability, independence, and uh, appropriate swimmer club uh, representation. We're striving to be progressive, to have fundamental change. Uh, 
ensure the stakeholders are acknowledged. And we, we want to write them in a more simple manner. I found that, uh, well not I, others have found that our bylaws are, are very wordy and complicated and we'll be aiming to rewrite them in a more simple, uh, let's call it 21st century language. So proposing changes, and again, there, there will be a detailed update for at the next president's town hall in June, but the, uh, the following areas are currently in various stages of discussion, finalization, and what and whatnot with uh, with with the bylaws. So, um, member and stakeholder definitions and and rights, and those will be compliant with the new not-for-profit legislation. We're looking at different new voting formulas and thresholds. We have to make some changes to our AGM, our quorum, and our agenda as it's published in the current bylaws. Sorry. And we're also looking uh, at uh, updating our board composition. There are timelines, uh, sorry, not quite yet. So there, are, we have a plan for timelines. Uh, in May, we'll be uh, taking a very close to finished draft to our uh, committee chairs and various other key stakeholders for input. Um, and comment and, and discussion. After that meeting, we'll be taking it to sport law strategy for them to uh, write the new bylaws. Um, and then that comes back to this president's meeting in June with uh, an almost final version. I didn't get that. Could you? And, and uh, after that, then uh, board approval in June, July, sorry, July, and then ready, the final product ready for um, member approval at the September AGM. I don't know, I know Carlos is on the on the call. I don't know if Carlos, if there's anything you wanted to add in this area. Carlos Seo is, a, is our vice president and also a key contributor to this, uh, to this project. No, Darren, th thanks for that update. And, and as you mentioned, um, we, we will have much more detailed updates as we continue to um, advance uh, the, these four areas of change. So stay tuned. All right. Well, we're almost there. Well, hopefully when we turn the corner uh, into uh, the, new, the new year, 22, uh, January to March, and we've just segmented out, we just like, looked at periods of time and uh, each, each period of time when we think we're going to have a bit more uh, promise we have to get uh, settled back. But I do believe that uh, uh, there will be a lot more promise in this period of time. I think we're going to see a bit more of what we knew. I wouldn't say that I would, we'll be back to what we felt is normal. Uh, and if we are, great. I'd like to be wrong that way, but I've been wrong in other ways. And so these are the things that we want, we hopefully will see. We will see um, uh, you know, getting to what we call our st stage three competitions, where it's club invitationals, and obviously there's small uh, restrictions, uh, you know, str strive for way more competition that start to take place. We will probably have an, uh, work towards an in-person modification of Ontario Swimming Championships. We don't know what the gatherings will look like, what we're able to do and what we're not able to do. Hopefully we'll be able to have some small group in-person stroke camps at uh, the regional and the provincial level. Um, and then I do believe this is that when we hit the hit our stride April to August, that we will be in a much better, much better position. I do believe that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, our um, uh, many of our, our, our kids and, and our clientele that we, we deal with it day to day should be vaccinated. Uh, and, uh, and that should help uh, secure that we are in a, a good, safe working environment. And uh, so those are the things that we're going to look, obviously we're going to look at a Canada Games trials. Uh, we don't have much detail on that yet. We're going to look at in-person regional programming. We want to get the regions up and up and going and being active and uh, contributing back to their member clubs. That's the stretch that can come from the provincial level through to the regional level. We want to see that. And then hopefully we can start to see even a more, a bit, a bit more robust uh, competition uh, our championships, our festivals, 
And that's at the end of the day, we really want to see a, a stability at the club level. Um, and uh, I know that's a long stretch. It's not what you probably wanted to hear. There is no going to be, there isn't going to be a switch that you turn on and presto, we're back to normal. I think hopefully we've learned that, that that's not the case, but I do believe things are going to roll around better. It's just going to continue to have more patience. You've shown great uh, pers perseverance and persistence through this process, but I think we're going to have to rely on a bit more patience. This is a, a, some of the staff right off the bat back in March of 2020 came up with. And I think to this day, this really holds true, rings true. I think it's something that uh, no matter how, how, how well we can get ourselves back to normal that we shouldn't lose sight of. I think it's one of those maybe silver linings that uh, we talk about from, um, uh, you know, from, from the, our experience. So hopefully, uh, Things like that are part of what how we're uh, improving ourselves. And this one is pretty messy, but it's again thanking all of you for what you do. Uh, uh, I, I can just imagine how um, how challenging it has been, especially if you've just joined the board for the first time. You've been in a club for a couple of years, and all of a sudden you're faced with this, and a lot of challenges, a lot of uh, sad faces, whether they're swimmers or stress faces, whether they're coaches. Or just parents of not knowing if it's safe to go to the pool. And uh, we know it's been quite stressful. And, and uh, uh, I can tell you that we've worked, we, we, we've worked hard at, or at least when I say hard, we've worked every day to try and uh, figure out what we can do to help. Uh, I believe that we have advocated the sport to the various levels of, of uh, government, whether it's municipal, whether it's provincial, or whether it's uh, federal. We have the ways and means to be at least have be an earshot of what matters. I know that some people feel that we should have been doing uh, letter campaigns, but we did do that. We tried to make some inroads. Uh, one of the things we did find out talking with uh, um, with uh, Canadian Life Saving is that when you're in a gray period and a gray lockdown, public health does not want to hear or think of anything other than what they're dealing with. And, we, and we, we experienced that when we had clubs get back out of gray into red, we actually were able to have some conversations with uh, the clubs. The clubs have done a tremendous job to have conversations with their inspectors and, and, uh, and so on and so forth to expand and, and hopefully uh, get a, a better interpretation of what uh, they were faced with and in, in, in many cases. So there are, there are ways of getting there, but we've learned quickly in the gray, there's not much to be said. And there was also the sense that we should have uh, you know, uh, uh, set up on um, uh, polls and and camp other campaigns and things like that. We find that a lot of those go nowhere, and uh, so we just kept. I mean, I, I believe probably every day I'm on the phone to somebody either at the provincial level or at the national level. And when I say that, that's the ear next to the federal level and the provincial government level in some way or another. If it's not me, it's someone else that's in the staff that's trying to work that. So. I think we've been trying to do that. I'm gonna come back to one point that was brought up regarding the stakeholder review. We didn't receive the information until late December, early January. We did have a, a, a board call with staff, worked through all the details, tried, and then we put to work where we could in various committees and things like that. And one example is that I just got off the ground, what I'm calling, it's a bit long, it's not very a catchy name, it doesn't roll off your tongue very well, but a Swim Ontario Swimming Community Experience Panel. And it's really about finding a group of people that cover all the diversity and pieces like that of the, of the organization who have experiences of being in the organization or in their organizations and giving feedback how we can. And we feel that this will help uh, 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 drain over or leap over or intertwine with other, other uh committees that we have working so that we can become just better. We can learn a lot of what the strategic plan that we, we had have in place is around educating. And we've had, we got to retool that a little bit because things have changed for us. And we have to, as they say, adapt, adjust, pivot, and all those type of things. And any of you who uh, are either uh, have frontline workers, such as in what's listed here, or you know someone or you live with someone, I, I cannot uh, even fathom how strenuous and how hard it's been. Uh, for some of you that have been on some of your return to swimming committees within your club, 
Uh, I know that you've drawn on some uh, medical expert uh, experience or um, and experts in a way to try and guide yourselves and everything else. So I can just imagine the stress and everything that everybody's uh, been going through. So as we said, we wanted to have this talk or this uh, meeting uh, during National Volunteer Week. We would like to come back in uh, mid-June as a little bit of a touch point. We might even be able to, between now and then, and I don't know if you've noticed, but time flies when we're in, when we're in the pandemic. I don't know where it goes. Uh, but we can come back with some of these uh, uh, question points that came up and see what see what we can uh, come together with. So I leave it at that. And anything to add? Oh, thank you, Dean. Um, I know that there is a question there, um, but I, I will say the slide deck you're going to have available. A few people have asked about that. You're going to have that available on the website. Yep. 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 Tomorrow. Well, the slide deck probably really easy. Uh, and yeah. The, the magic of turning ex exporting this uh, recording into Lindsay's hands, uh, it'll probably go quite well, and it probably will be ready by tomorrow or the next day. Okay. So that'll be available. Okay. Yes. And then Karen, I think there was one other question, yeah. wasn't there? Yeah. What are the current discussions, if any, on regional, provincial, and national qualifying times? Right now, we haven't addressed any of those uh, uh, other than what Swimming Canada may have put out. I think they, they have a certain date on it. We haven't, we haven't uh, looked at that. Uh, uh, for some, it might be a, a urgent, urgency, but for right now, there's so many other things that I think uh, sort of are prioritized. But uh, we will get on that. Nothing that uh, some of us that work, not us, us when I say us, some of the people who work with... Uh, spreadsheets and everything else. It is going to be challenging. We haven't, we, we know that there's a big, big gap. So we have to figure that, that part out. Okay. So Dean, I want to thank you and all the staff for uh, bringing this together. And uh, thank you for the comments that I see. Uh, I've seen a few comments here uh, of thanks. Um, and uh appreciate all the input as well. Uh, we will take a look at all those comments and questions and uh, it's just the kind of thing we need to uh, head us in the right direction where your concerns are. So thanks to everybody and uh, have a good evening. Thanks everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.